don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Welcome to another video here on the channel and today we're going to talk about Tanya Gold's article about Nike's plus size mannequin. But instead of telling her how crazy she is, I decided that I would, as a former journalist, give some of my article suggestions. Now these article suggestions are body issue related, but they're not about a fat mannequin. So that's a plus. If you're interested in that video, keep watching. And if you're not, bye! So obviously I need to start by telling you that my opinions are my own and I don't condone any violence toward the Telegraph or toward Tanya Gold, but I do condone you telling them your opinion on their social media or on their website because they put themselves out there. They did this. So you have every right to voice your opinion and I think you should. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's get into the meat and taters of this discussion about my article ideas for the Telegraph. Article idea number one, five health disorders that lead to weight gain. The thing that really bothered me about Tanya's article is that she kind of implies that everybody who's fat made themselves that way and that everybody who's fat wants to be fat, when in actuality there are a lot of fat people who are fat because of a disorder or because of their health in some shape or form. PCOS is very common among women of childbearing age. That not only affects fertility but also causes weight gain. It's really hard for women with PCOS to lose weight or even maintain the weight that they're at currently. And then you have thyroid problems, which affect 20 million Americans as of the time that I researched this. Thyroid conditions can lead to massive weight loss or weight gain, either way, really fast, really rapidly. So those are two really common conditions, but what? There's that many conditions? No, we don't have time to go over all of that, so I'll just slow roll it here on the screen. Here are a list of other disorders that can cause weight gain. Article idea number two, why cheap food makes you fat. According to the Pew Research Group, 19% of American households are actually upper income households. 30% of households are low income households. Those who live in low or mid income households usually have to shop at discount grocery stores. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of homework experiment stuff to do. So, I think that you should go into a Harris Teeter or a Whole Foods or another higher class grocery store and take a look at a product. It could be bread, it could be pasta, but take a look at the ingredients and at the nutrition label. On the ingredients, you'll probably notice that the ingredients are very high quality and there are only a few of them. And then if you look at the nutrition label, you'll see that the calories and the carb count are pretty good, you know? depending on the product. Now take a trip to your local discount grocery store. Pick up the same type of product that you looked at at Hair Cedar or Whole Foods or wherever you went. It's not gonna be the exact same because it's gonna probably be an off brand of whatever brand you looked at at that grocery store, but you'll get the idea. If you pick up the product that's inside the discount grocery store and look at the ingredients, you'll probably notice that the ingredients list is a lot longer and it probably lists a lot of questionable chemicals that nobody knows what they're for. And then if you look at the nutrition label, you'll probably notice a higher calorie count and a higher carb count, two of the attributes of a food that makes it unhealthy. This is usually because discount food is processed differently to make it faster and cheaper and usually uses more low quality products or fillers to make the food than those higher quality grocery stores. So in the end, you come out with a very unhealthy food. Statistically speaking, 33% of Americans who earn $15,000 or less a year are obese. 26.4% of Americans who earn $55,000 or less a year are obese. And a more sobering statistic is that 20 to 60% of children living in low income neighborhoods are more likely to be obese than children living in higher socioeconomic status neighborhoods. So to me, it seems a little weird to harp on the fact that there are plus size mannequins and plus size clothing when you're not addressing the problem. You're getting mad at the effect and not at the cause. Article number three, conundrums that the plus size community needs answered pronto. I wanna know why people like Tanya think that plus size people are gonna walk up in the gym with some corduroys and a turtleneck to work out in. Like, honey, I admit 
10 times more body heat than you. And it also seems really weird for you to tell a fat person that they need to cover up their body, but then you're cool with a skinny person having their body out. Another conundrum I need answered is why is it that the same people who sit there and they're like, go to the gym, stop eating, put your fork down. They're the first people to make fun of fat people for running in the gym. And they're the first people to make fun of fat people at a restaurant for drinking Diet Coke or eating a salad. Like y'all are so illogical. Last conundrum kind of leads into article idea number four. Why is it that 60% of women in America are plus size, but only 10% of the market sells plus size clothing? And the 10% that does sell plus size clothing is usually insanely expensive. So as I said, that leads into number four. And article idea number four is explaining why sizing has changed for women so much, at least in the U.S. I've always wondered why my size 8 friend is a size 8 and then needs to replace her jeans. And she goes to like three different shops in which she is an 8, a 12, and a 16. Like this is where body dysmorphia starts. You're telling a size 8 that she's plus size. So you can sell her clothes and sell the idea that your clothes are too good for her because she's not a size 0. No one sees a problem with this. Why do men have standard sizes but women don't? Like a dude can go into pretty much any store and say, do you have a 4832? And they're like, yeah, dude, right over there. Like go see it. Or they're like, nah, we don't carry your size. And he's like, okay, cool. I'll go to the, to the store next door. And the store next door has them. But women don't have that option. Why? Why? It would make life so much easier and much less stressful. But the reason why this happens is because brands want to make it feel like an elite brand. They want you to feel like you have to change yourself to be worthy to don their beautiful clothes. This is why I appreciate Nike. Nike is traditionally an athlete's brand, but they saw the hole in the market where there are people who are plus size who are constantly working out. There are people who are plus size who are starting their workout journey and they need some freaking clothes. When plus size people don't have clothes made for them, they're told to cover up. They're told that too much of their body is hanging out. But then People get all mad and get their panties in a bunch when a company wants to make plus size clothing. Like let them make clothing so we can properly cover ourselves. Even though I feel like if you're at the gym or like wherever you're at, I feel like there's a level of decency that needs to be met for everyone regardless of their size. And I don't think that the level of decency should be here for skinny people and here for fat people. Like everyone should meet this level of decency. Do you, you're supposed to be comfortable, you're supposed to be happy, do you boo do you but don't have your cash and prizes hanging out please i don't want to see that and last but not least how about an article on how body shaming does not help people lose weight and on sizeism too body shamers have been around for like ever and they're very rarely successful no one gets called a fat cow and wants to run to the gym. Some people do cope with food, and other people are actually very strict on their gym regimen and very strict on what they put in their body, yet they still don't lose weight. They go to their doctor, and their doctor tells them they should talk about weight loss surgery because that's where it's gotten to because their body isn't responding normally to weight loss efforts. And you're over here telling them that they're fat cows, and you're thinking that's gonna make them wanna run to the gym real quick. Sizeism is a very important thing to me because there's already protection for race and gender and religion in the workplace. You can't not hire someone because they don't match up with your expectation on those things. But there's no law out there that says someone can choose not to hire you because of your size. Now, I will put in a quick disclaimer. I mean, if you're expected to run a country mile at your job and you're plus size and you're just not physically fit enough and maybe they gave you a fitness test and you failed, like, duh. I'm fine with them not hiring you for that. But I'm talking about, like, jobs that aren't huge on physicality, like if you're sitting at a desk or you're doing this or you're doing that and there's not a whole lot of physical manual labor involved, why do we not have protection for that? Why? I have been in plenty of professional situations where my size has been the sole factor of why I was not recognized for this, that, or the other. There are people who don't get promotions because they're fat. There are people who don't even get jobs because they're fat. There are people who literally are so talented and so good at what they do, but they're constantly pushed to the back burner. So on to the conclusion. When you get down to brass tacks, I think it's very important to talk about how ill-informed this article is because literally Nike has never said 
that they think being plus size is healthy. I haven't even heard of an influencer who encourages their followers to become plus size. I'm sure that there are people out there, but I have never seen this. Like, I don't know where she's gotten this idea that this is glorifying being unhealthy because no one that I know has ever said that you should be plus size and unhealthy and that's like, that's like the new skinny or whatever. I've never heard that before and I've never seen that perpetuated on a large scale before. So it just seems really ill-informed and like this article came out of left field. But I want The Telegraph and Tanya Gold to know that it's this kind of ill-informed fat phobic article that leads to things like bulimia, anorexia, depression, suicidal thoughts, because it's not being handled maturely. So the next time you guys reach for a keyboard to write a fat phobic and ill-informed article, I hope that you steal some ideas from this video because... They're a lot more important than a fat mannequin. If you're not Tanya Gold or The Telegraph, thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope that it was slightly entertaining for you and also informative for you if you are somebody who fat shamed, which shame on you, don't do that. But if you liked this video, like it, comment, tell your friends, subscribe to the channel, do all the things because I like talking. Until next time, stay sassy.